HBCU Digest Radio, I'm your host, Jared Carter, and we are joined today for an exclusive interview with leadership from Bennett College for Women, uh, who, if you have been paying attention to the news lately, is in strong position to reclaim uh, its reaffirmation with the Southern Association of Colleges and Universities Commission on Colleges uh, for its full and unchallenged accreditation uh, with goals of raising upwards of $5 million by a February 1 deadline uh, to prove to the commission uh, that there is financial solvency and a sound plan of sustainability and forward moving uh, for the Bennett Bells. And today to talk to these issues, uh, we are joined by the distinguished president of Bennett College, uh, Dr. Phyllis Worthy Dawkins and Gwendolyn Mackel Rice. She is the president of the Bennett College National Alumni Association. She told me to make sure I say that correctly uh, to identify the sisters as, a, as an association. So, uh, sisters, I appreciate uh, both of your time today. Uh, let us begin, so to speak, with the elephant in the room, uh, which is an update on where things stand with Bennett's fundraising. Uh, we know what the total is, but how much, if you can share, has been raised uh, and what are the sources that have helped to contribute to that total thus far? Um, good afternoon. Um, Total, the total amount that has been raised so far is just over uh, $1 million, and we're still counting every day. Uh, we have about 2,000 people who have made donations, and these donations are coming from a variety of different um, organizations, churches, uh, individuals, uh, especially through our social media campaign. So we have a very aggressive social media campaign, and the, the, the amount that the people have given, uh, the amount has ranged from $1 to up to $10,000. Uh, and we're receiving also checks, and um, people are also texting to, to give. Uh, and of course, they are giving through our website, www.bennett.edu uh, slash donate. Now, this is this total is since the letters received or overall since you guys have been working with Sachs uh, to, to, to this, prove financial solvency. Uh, this is overall. OK, this is overall uh, because our budget budget year with Sachs is July 1 right. uh, uh, through June 30th. But we have uh, received an increase since the announcement uh, since December 11th, and I can't give you that total uh, because it, it's coming in every day. Mm -hmm. um, okay. President Rice, uh, the the Alumni Association has has been renowned uh, for its power in giving and philanthropy, um, even in times where, by most measures, you would say, "Well, that's a that's a small group of graduates," but annually you guys are giving upwards of a million dollars in support of the institution um how has that that changed since the the receipt of this letter in december 11th this has this activated the sisters more or what's been the tone uh of the alumni uh since this, this news came well out? indeed it has activated us more as a matter of fact uh, if you look at last year we raised, we had a goal of $1.2 million, but we raised close to $2 million. So we increased our giving by 100% last year. Now, I don't know what the totals are that have come in to date. I think it's probably maybe close to a half million. I'm not sure. We don't have that exact date yet. We're waiting for that, that data yet, but we're waiting for that. Uh, but right now, we're charged up. We have... Uh, uh, a campaign going for asking every alum to give 1%, and we mean every alum, not just those who, the 34% who are giving at this point, who have traditionally given at least uh, given last year. Uh, we And asking them to give, to, to ask others, their friends, their associates, uh, people they do business with. Uh, we, 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 we're putting a lot of examples out there. We're also providing form letters, not form letters, but templates uh, for them to use. Uh, in addition to that, we're reaching out to some celebrities. Uh, there's a, we have a group, we have a little think tank that's really working uh, things out. We have a group of young ladies who are uh, really focused on social media. And in addition to that, uh, we're capping that. You know, Bennett was built on faith. 
and we have a prayer line that will be launched beginning on Sunday evening, and we have galvanized all the clergy sisters uh, to help us with that. So we've, we're moving right along, and uh, we're also looking at uh, uh, what we can do more with Bennett so that in, in terms of not only raising the five million, helping to raise the five million, but also to be more engaged and more collaborative in, in our work with the college, because we believe that contributes to sustainability. Let's talk about: Is, is there any sense of, of that you guys can provide of how the the college got here? Um, you know, it, it's not everyone who is a higher education aficionado or who works at a college. Um, and a lot of folks don't understand how do you lose accreditation? What does it mean to be uh, financially uh, instable, for lack of a better term? How did how does the school get here? And what are the definitions you've been provided by SACS that say this is why the goal is what it is and this is why the decision was made? Okay. Um So when we learned of the news on December 11th that we were removed uh, from membership in the SATs, um, appealing, uh, and that's now based on our appeal, so we were still accredited, I want to say that. Um, We were told that it was due to one standard out of 88 to 90 of them. And that that standard um, uh, is on uh, financial resources. So while we had a good year last year, we had a clean audit, we have no findings, we had a surplus in our budget, retention had increased by 9%, overall enrollment had increased by 16%, we just didn't have an, uh, enough additional uh, cash in the bank uh, to meet the stand around financial resources or financial stability. Is so, that- that's why we need at least five million dollars uh, by February first to support um, our financial stability. When, when you think about cash on hand, I, I would add that I, I would add that um, the, it's been the accumulative effect of deficits um, in the last eleven years. Not every year, but uh, several years. And so, with that five million dollars, would begin to make us whole at least until and and to help us to stabilize so that we can move on to more sustainable uh efforts there so i i i would just add that but that that cumulative deficit has been a result of uh the withdrawal of parent plus loans at, then that period you know when everybody suffered particularly hbcus and and uh we've had a lot of change in in leadership so i think all of that contributes to that and uh we 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 have to rebound from that well that that was the question i wanted to ask uh it was just a few months ago bennett was one of of several colleges that received some uh, deferment relief uh, from the capital loan program uh, from the U.S. Department of Education. Um, That frees up some cash. But is this an issue where this is something that you point to, we we have more debt than we can manage or we don't have enough student tuition revenue coming in? Is, Is there something singular or is there many little things that contribute to this? And if it's many little things, how do we address them? It's a combination of what you just said, okay? Mm-hmm. So we, it's, it's basically uh, due to the fact that, um, uh, and it really started just as uh, 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 Ms. Rice said, that uh, it started back in 2008, 2009 with the economic downturn when the market crashed. And uh, as a result of that, uh, many of our students' parents lost their jobs, and then when uh, a federal uh, program under the FAFSA, uh, it's a financial aid program uh, called the Parent Plus Program, was altered to increase the number of years that parents had to demonstrate in terms of their credit, uh, their credit history. As a re- result of job losses, that impacted African-American students more than any other population. So what Bennett went through was not just a a Bennett problem, but an HBCU problem. And during that time, many of us lost students. 
all of a sudden because of a, a rule change that increased the number of years that you had to demonstrate credit history. And so the other part, so when that hit, enrollment declined, okay? Now the deferment, Bennett uh, initiated that as president. Uh, I went to the Department of Education and asked, what can we do because we were paying off one of our loans. It's called the HBCU Capital Loan Program. Uh, and that program funds more than 60 or 70 HBCUs to help with infrastructure on campus. And, and so we were making the payments that almost equal the amount of our annual debt. Right. Okay. So, so when, when we got the deferment, it's going to allow us six years to make those payments to, and it allows us to grow in enrollment and to financially stabilize. What what have the conversations been like with the students and, and alumni so far? Um, obviously, everybody knows this is a this is an intense period. Mm -hmm. um, but right. what, what are those conversations like on on and off campus? I'll speak to the the students with the students immediately uh, when I returned to campus from New Orleans. The SACS meeting was in New Orleans. Um, I met with the student body and with the my vice president. Uh, the, known as the leadership team, we met with the student body. Uh, of course, the students had uh, had questions in regards to what does that mean uh, for our degrees in terms of uh, graduating from institution that's accredited. So we had a good discussion. They asked, asked the right questions, but at the end, the students pledged to return this semester and to also assist us in fundraising. So they are a part of our social media campaign to uh, get other people to donate to Bennett. We also sent them a letter that they could use during the holidays uh, to get their family and friends uh, to donate to Bennett. And those donations are coming in as a result of that as well. I'd like to add, I spoke with the SGA president last night, and uh, she is working with uh, other SGA presidents at other HBCUs, and they are working together uh, on a campaign uh, so that students, I, I can't, I don't want to reveal what they're planning to do, but um, they're working. Uh, they are working. Uh, the students are really fired up. Uh, and I think that has to do with the fact that there's a, a love for Bennett that uh, goes down through the years. And, Jared, of course, you speak about that uh, uh, when, when, uh, when you talk about Bennett alumni. We, we do that. And so the students are, are, are working, and I can attest to that. Uh, and the alums, yes, and we also have met with the alums, had conference calls with the alums to inform them uh, where we are in terms of our accreditation status. And uh, Trustee Rice is uh, spearheading an alumni campaign uh, as well. So there are multiple groups. Let me also share with you, Jared, that uh, in addition to the alumni, student, parents, and faculty staff campaign to raise money and the social media campaign, we have a lot of organizations that have joined Bennett, uh, the Women's College uh, Coalition, uh, the National Association of Negro Women, UNCF, uh, United Methodist Church, and, and other organizations, including basketball groups, uh, organizations. I got a check yesterday from the commission from uh, the commissioner for SIAC, which is a basketball lead, uh, including Benedict College, Morehouse, and some other institutions. So we are surprised about uh, the type of donors and the number of donors coming in. Uh, we have, and we're very grateful for all the outpouring of support. Well, I, I think that that's, it's one of the beautiful things uh, when when something like this happens with an HBCU that the entire HBCU community kind of galvanizes around a campus. Um, and there is no sense of, oh, you know, well, it's just too late that it is what it is for that school. That's not the approach that we take. Um, what has been the 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 communication with SACS since the since the announcement? Um, do you may remain in, in communication with them? Uh, are they continuing to, if if they if, provide any guidance about what are the steps that could help? Uh, are they 
helpful with any resources or is there a role that sax plays in this period where you're trying to raise the money and, and demonstrate uh solvency uh, as I said before, we, we appealed the decision right after we heard the announcement. And while in New Orleans, we talked to our vice president and the president of SAT. Um, and uh, we in conversation with them. And we will get the official letter that details um, um, the description. I told you that we were called on one standard uh, dealing with financial resources, but we don't know the details as of today around that standard. We do know that it has to do with our net tuition revenue, uh, the amount of revenue generated from uh, what they call the UNAP, uh, unrestricted net asset. Uh, uh, minus exclusive of plant operations. Uh, and we do know that it has to do with some of the debt that we have on campus. And so we do know that those two things that we need to erase, uh, which totals about $5 million. And so that would impact our, what we call our UNAP score. Are there other things that the, the school... <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. And if you go out on the SATS website, uh, shortly, a week after the announcement, they printed or posted the disclosure statement. Right. And that's all we have right now. Uh, then on January 15, we get the details of, of the uh, the sanction. Is there something that the campus is, is, is working to do, or is it even possible? Um, because this isn't the first time that Bennett has faced, um, you know, extended, you know, status change from SACS. But are there other assets on campus that you say, well, maybe we take this building offline, maybe we do this, uh, you know, maybe we do that with yeah. personnel. Are, are those in the works as well? Yes. Yeah, so, so you've heard us talk about the social media campaign and individuals and organizations donating, but we are looking to liquidate some of our assets. We are looking to see loan forgiveness for some of our debt. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are a variety of strategies we're trying to employ before February 1st. So and I should add that the trustees have voted to uh, develop a plan to re-engineer Bennett um, so that we are sustained for the long haul. Um, as you know, uh, there, we, we need to rethink our, um, we need to rethink the, the whole program in terms of 21st century uh, academics. And that's not to say we're not great, but we want to be better. Um, and we want to be more engaged with the community, more town and gown, uh, increased collaboration with the parents and alumni. Uh, and which I mentioned before, and there are other and, and the technology upgrade our technology. So uh, we're looking at that, and we we we're planning to bring in a stellar group of of folks in to serve on that committee, not just to do it internally, but to work externally with other partners to help us to move into a direction for increased sustainability. Because the five point something million dollars will not sustain us forever, but uh, we have to rethink. Bennett College, and, um, and, 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 and we're very intentional about that, so I just want to share that with you. In other words, we have to continue to, we, we can't continue to do business as we've done it. We have to change and look in a, in, um, a different model. Yeah, a different model. Mm -hmm. uh, not completely. We, we certainly will retain the core, uh, uh, the core uh, mission of Bennett and to educate women, of course, and to continue the traditions that bind the sisterhood, um, all of those uh, we, we, we want to do, and we want to do everything better. And everybody can always do much better what they already do. Um, and in terms particularly of our education, in terms of our fiscal management, uh, we're looking at, at new ways to upgrade. So the trustees are on the case. Well, that, that's what I wanted to round out with. And I, and I so much appreciate uh, your time and your honesty with, with a lot of these questions. I know they're tough um, and certainly not meant to pick on you guys, but just to show uh, how diligent you're being um, and how how much we should be loving on Bennett. Um, but I think the, right. la the last thing that I, I would ask is how how do you make that case at this point? Because it. I, th I think that it, it's not a stretch or it's not disrespectful to say there are some there are some challenges beyond the finance. Um, Bennett is 
located next to North Carolina A&T. That is a challenge. That's one of the fastest growing HBCUs in the country. Uh, Bennett is in a, in a city that has several institutions, along with North Carolina A&T, a growing UNCG, UNC Greensboro. Um, you look at, at a, a college like Spelman College, they just got a $30 million gift. Um, how do you how do you make that narrative so possible when even in our sector, which is trying so hard to, to work and save Bennett, there are other instances where, that make you say, well, this is even more of a challenge because the HBCU sector is doing things that you could say are taking away from Bennett, so to speak. Well, let me go back to what I said earlier and what has occurred uh, over the last two years. Uh, we are seeing an increase in enrollment. Though small, we are growing. Uh, recall that I said earlier, uh, last year we saw a 16% in enrollment overall and a 30% in, and 36% in enrollment in new students and a 9% increase in retention. So the, uh, the trend, we are trending in the right direction. So the question is, why are they coming and why are they staying? Mm -hmm. And the, the reason they stand is because of Bennett's unique history. We are a women's institution. If you want to compare us to North Carolina A&T, A&T is co-ed. And, uh, and we embrace uh, our, uh, our co-institution right across the street. And we have partnerships with North Carolina A&T. Uh, as well, but we are uniquely di uh, different because Bennett produces strong, phenomenal women grounded in leadership and in the sisterhood, and that's what makes us uh, uniquely different. Uh, they become leaders in their chosen fields, whether it's STEM, whether it's the humanities, whether it's in business or social work or teacher education. They become leaders. That's what we do well. We produce women who are first. We, we have the first African-American surgeon, licensed surgeon uh, in the nation came from Bennett. We have the first person to direct the, uh, a woman press, uh, leader to direct the Peace Corps. Corp, corps. And, and we can just go on and on about how many women that we have produced as first in their field and produce strong women in their field. And so that's what makes us uniquely uh, different. And basically what we need to do is just, we just have to stabilize leadership and, and, and also stabilize our finances. And, and actually our niche uh, to the community, because this is a time uh, in this Me Too movement and, and, and the number of women who are right. uh, becoming elected officials and also, then it has an emphasis on giving back to the community. Of course, you know about our work in the sit-in movement, but also uh, the, the students still, the Bennett Bells are voting bells. Bennett, th this is what's unique about Bennett. And let me share with you, um, there's a young lady who graduated only five years ago, a class of 2013, who's a teacher in the Berkeley Public Schools. She was elected to the school board, the first teacher to be elected to a school board. So it's that kind of fire that happens at Bennett that encourages mixed women, women who come to Bennett, want to do to serve their community. Um, there was a study done in 1998, and I, I'd say it's still true, where Bennett was um, was part of a case study, and um, and and they were compared to Bryn Mawr, and mm -hmm. we found that we had high academic expectations, a lot of personal support and advice, and a supportive peer culture, a strong mission. A critical mass of African American women, inclusion in the curriculum, the presence of role models, and, and I, as I said, an emphasis on giving back to the community, extracurricular involvement opportunities, and awareness of the societal realities that face African American women. And I think that's that's unique in itself. Uh, we don't have many opportunities to do that, and I and I believe there there have been many studies that say a single sex institution um, has some positives and that that can make a difference. I know when I was at Bennett, which was a few years ago, um, it, it it was it was we felt free. I think to to talk. We didn't have the competition of dealing with men, so we exercised. Uh, it was very. It was a different environment. Mm -hmm. um, there are many studies on that. I don't want to go into that, but Bennett is 
then it has a niche uh, to fill, and um, I think it does that well, and we can continue to do that better. Uh, and that's what we're planning to do. As I said, the trustees are working toward engine, re-engineering Bennett so that um, that people understand who we are, because you don't hear a lot about Bennett anymore, um, as you do some other schools, and I don't know what is the reason for that, but I think uh, over time we that is one thing that we want to change is our um, the knowledge of Bennett in the community. Well, just to round out again, we appreciate your time. And, and just as a reminder to finish this out, um, where can people send checks? How can we give online? Where can we buy one of those T-shirts, the Stand With Bennett shirts? Um, get, give us every single outlet where we can where we can send the money because <laughs> that, that's okay. important. Yes, you can send the money several different ways. Number one, if you don't remember anything, just go to our website. Our website address is www.bennett.edu slash donate. Or you can text to give by texting the word BELLS, B-E-L-L-E-S, to 444-999. Or you can just simply write us a check and send it to the Office of Institutional Advancement or the President's Office at 900 East Washington Street, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27401. And then finally, uh, we're just looking for uh, celebrities and athletes and others to make major gifts towards the uh, our campaign. Uh, we're getting a lot of people, as I said earlier, we've had over 2,000 donors since December 11th, since the announcement, and they're coming in every day, but we also appreciate some big gifts as well. So um, please uh, consider giving in, in, in many other ways other than uh, through the social media campaign.